This should be interesting. It's a remote control fan control module from China. And this was described as 300 watt air conditioning fan circuit board universal control module and remote control comes as the main circuit board. Well, I'll show you what it comes at. Cost £9.59 shipped from China. Could be useful for repairing uh, small air conditioners, not ones of compressors, just the standard ones that use water as a cooling agent. So inside the box is the console that goes in the top of the unit with clicky buttons and LEDs and the infrared receiver. We've got the main control circuit board. Oh, I say the main control circuit board. I'd call this more the power circuit board by the look of it. Uh, that has the triax that switch the power and the power supply. And then we've got a remote control with the usual little tab um, for controlling it with the little... Are we going to be able to see the LED? Oh, a little, little glimmer of the LED, I think. Yes, you can barely see it. Right, tell you what. We'll open this unit up and I'll take some pictures. Let's zoom down. And we'll see what the circuitry is like and how this thing is used. I kind of know how it's used. It's Basically, it's a five triacs. Three of them, the big ones, are for the fan speed control. And uh, one of them is for the swinging the fan backwards and forwards. Or you could use it for an ionizer if you wanted. And the other one is for a pump, I think, for pumping cold water over one of the uh, filter materials to actually give a cooling effect. So there is the magic chip with no number on it. There's a surprise. And we have the clicky buttons, we've got the infrared receiver, and we've got the LEDs, right? Tell you what, I'm going to take some pictures of these and then we'll reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. So on the box, underneath a big sticky label they'd put over it to show the stock number was basically a guide to how to wire it. But it's irrelevant. Once I've removed the label, it showed a completely different circuit board with a chip on board and the remote control infrared receiver on board. Um, and only four outputs, whereas this one has five. So that's completely irrelevant. But the instructions are there, kind of in Chinese, if you need them. But my instructions will be much better. Let's zoom down in this. So this is the main power card. It has a capacitor that is one microfarad, 400 volt, and it creates a 5 volt supply courtesy of some various resistors, smoothing capacitor, decoupling capacitors and diodes in the back, and then a 5.1 volt zener. That supply then goes up, up this connector to the remote module, and it then controls five triacs, three for the motor, the main fan motor, low, medium and high, and uh, a couple of small ones for the swing, the oscillator that moves the thing backwards and forwards, or the grill backwards and forwards, or rotates the grill. And uh, cold, which seems to, well, I'm guessing it runs the pump for the uh, evaporative cooling effect. There's also a little beeper. Now, this little link here is either bridged out if it's not used, or I think you can put a float switch there to control the pump. And all it does is it breaks the feed to the triac. On the back of this circuit board, not a lot on the back of the circuit board. On the back, we've got some diodes as part of the power supply with the sticky stuff. The circuit board was pressed up against the controller. Let me just bring the controller in here. And it had peeled some of the uh, adhesive sticky pad here for just jamming onto your case of whatever you're actually fixing. Uh, so that was quite hard to remove. So I just took the pictures with it on. Uh, but we've got the discharge resistor for that capacitor, quite a low value, relatively speaking, 220k. It's going to be pushed, it's going to be dissipating a bit. Uh, and then we've got a couple of diodes, which I'll show you in the schematic. A couple of resistors to limit inrush current and uh, filtering for the uh, power supply. And then just a couple of light, little uh, surface mount decoupling capacitors. The only other things worthy of note in the back here are 330 ohm resistors for the gates of the triax, and there's also a beeper with a resistance of 15 ohms and it's got a one microfarad well it says i haven't measured it because it's in circuit i could measure that just by unplugging it but anyway it says basically one microfarad it's a small capacitor just to limit the current that can flow to the sort of uh, the beeper coil when it makes pee pee noises pee pee noises yes 
good description. Let me zoom out a little bit for this. This is the remote control module. And it has eight LEDs. They're wired, multiplex. So there's four LEDs in one multiplex channel, four in the other. And the switches are also part of the multiplexing to save pins. It has the infrared receiver, which is just bridged across the uh, same supply as the microcontroller. A couple of resistors for the LEDs because they're multiplexed. And then one resistor here for the uh, s feedback from the switches. All the switches are sort of common to that. Um, not much else to see. Let's go straight to the schematic. And this schematic is pretty big, so I've divided it into three sections and we've got live coming on here, it goes through a fuse, and then it becomes the plus 5 volt rail. So it's not just live feeding loads via these tracks. Uh, I've only drawn one in here just as a reference, and I've just drawn the controller as a block, but there, I'll show you the controller schematic. The neutral has the inrush limiting resistor. It's got a 1 microfarad 400 volt capacitor with a 220k resistor across it. Now, because one leg is referenced to the mains of the DC supply, it can't use a bridge rectifier. So what it does is it simply uses one diode here to steer the current to the uh, capacitor here. Then there's a decoupling capacitor, a resistor, low value resistor, and then the clamping Zener diode, 5.1 volt, and then another decoupling capacitor. But um, because the capacitive dropper just can't operate in just half wave, it needs this other diode that basically shunts uh, the other half of the main cycle via the capacitor and via this diode so it can basically go into a state that it can actually pass current again so it can basically charge and discharge in each half cycle but it's only being used in half that which is surprising because it's going to be using a fair amount of current when in a certain mode i'll show you that mode i've got lots of little neons connected to that circuit board so i'll show you it working then the power basically goes out this is what i'm going to show you next the power going out to the control board uh, which has that peeper connected to between the positive rail and that capacitor to it. Um, so let's go to the control circuit board, which is very minimalist. And for simplicity, I've only drawn four LEDs and two buttons. See these coloured lines? These are the multiplexing lines. They uh, turn on in sequence, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I've only drawn two in because otherwise, basically it was an extension of this, it would have got very cluttered. So the supply comes up from the board and it's got another local decoupling capacitor, the infrared receiver going straight into the microcontroller. The microcontroller, to light the bottom LEDs, it pulls this resistor low, which only powers these LEDs. That one's probably high or just floating. And then it sequentially goes through these lines, one, two, three, four, five, and whichever LED is supposed to be lit, it will only go positive for that LED and therefore that Say, for instance, uh, only LED one was to be lit. Only the pink line here would go positive in that sort of step through sequence and that LED would light. Then once it's scanned through the bottom LEDs, it turns this resistor, these LEDs off by put, taking this resistor high or just floating. And then it pulls this resistor low and then it scans through them again. And uh, whichever ones are to be lit, it only goes positive for that one. So that's how it could control all those LEDs off just a few lines. But those scanning lines are also used for the switches. And I'm guessing it's done separately. I'm guessing that the um, both these LED resistors will be turned off, so to speak. They'll be taken high or just left floating. And then it steps through lines and then detects if a switch is pressed by the current flowing through the switch that's pressed to this 2.2K resistor and then back to the input. And that's just to protect against things like multiple buttons being pressed uh, while it's scanning and uh, causing a sort of like an issue. Um, that is it. The only other thing here is we've got one line going back down that ribbon cable for the beeper and we've got uh, five lines going back for the triax. Let's take a look at the triac driving. Now, I looked up a previous video I did to show what these fan motors look like inside for all the different settings. They have one base winding, one main winding, and then by switching the other windings in, in series, it effectively increases the impedance of that winding and it runs at lower speed. The capacitor is normally just basically dangling out the motor, but it has a connection internally to the neutral and uh, an auxiliary winding that gives the fan direction that sets the 
basically a direction that the fan's going to run it gives it gives it direction that's the only way to describe it really when you turn it on at the high setting it's only this coil that is energized and then these ones are called energized via the capacitor but this is the main one and it will run at high speed at medium these two in series so a much higher impedance coil that run at lower speed and so on the resistors are all 330 ohm and the swivel one is a much smaller track these are bt134s these are mac 97as when it's wanting to swivel the louver or the whole unit it turns the, this track on to switch that motor on and there's the one for the pump for the evaporative cooling that pumps the washer over the filter and there is its extra float switch and all it does is it breaks the signal to the uh, triac via that resistor to turn that uh, pump off if the reservoir has run dry that is it right tell you what let's take a look at it running so here it is i have put I'll try and get these out the way. That was me getting a, spraining a little, nipping a nerve in the fingers there. That wasn't a zap. Well, I don't think it was a zap. It's not powered up yet. And it does have a discharge resistor. Oh, this is so frustrating. Anyway, right. The buttons are in Chinese. The translation didn't work too well. This is the time function. And you've got the one hour, two hour and four hour. They light in a binary sequence. If you press it once, it goes one hour. Press it and again, it goes two hour. Press it again, one and two light to show it's three hour. Press it again, four. So basically, in the combinations, it can go up to seven hours. This button here is for the cooling, and it toggles this LED on here, on and off, and pump, turns the triac on and off for the pump if the float switch is uh, high enough. This button here is swivel and it lights that LED for the swivelling and then you've got the power on off you've got infrared receiver and then you've got the mode for the speed and it's low, medium and high unfortunately it was translated as low, stroke and gale fang but it is low, medium and high the remote control has uh, power it's got the speed uh, control it's got swing enabling cold enable for the pump the timer for stepping through it, and then it's got mode which beeps and does nothing let's see if these neons are even visible so i'm going to make sure there's no loose metal strands on the bench and i'm going to bring this module in which is now live it means voltage note that this ribbon cable uh, and all the circuitry in the remote here is live it means voltage now let's see if we can bring this in wobble 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 power on you may notice a neon is lit that is the uh, low setting on the fan then you press this button and it sets goes to the next one i'll just get my fingers out of the way when i do that and then you press it again and it switches up to the high setting so low medium and high we have the timer setting and that steps through the leds on this one, two, then one and two, then four, then four and one, and so on, in a binary sequence up to seven hours and then off again. We have the cool. The cool lights this LED here and also toggles this output on here. The swivel does the same. It uh, lights the swivel LED up here and it also toggles on that. And we can control it also via the remote control here. So I can toggle through the speeds by using the remote control. I can cycle the pump on and off. I can cycle the swing on and off. And then you can set the time as displayed on here. And then there's a mode button, which doesn't really do. I'm not sure what the mode button does. Hold on, I'm going to turn it off and on again. And then go to press mode. Nothing. Don't know what the mode does. It's possibly just for another function. Now, so the worst case scenario here. Why? Oh. Maybe mode does something. Mode is chasing backwards and forwards. Between the. Settings. So uh, mode 
just basically, that's awful, uh, mode just ramps the fan speed up and down. Right, we know what it does now. Excellent. So the worst case scenario here is uh, swivel and cool and one of the motor outputs, well, it's going to be activating. So that's driving three tracks at once. It's driving these LEDs. We could go one step for further. We could get all the LEDs on here. That's the worst case scenario, I think, for uh, all the LEDs lit and the uh, the neons lit. And I kind of want to know what the voltage across that uh, Zener diode now. I wonder if it's managed to maintain its uh, five volts. Let's probe this live circuit board <laughs> that's just wobbling everywhere. It's not fun. Ugh. I'll try not to touch it and scream. Let's bring in the meter and let's see if it's managing to maintain its 5 volts. So there is the negative and there's the positive. It's gone down to 4 volts. So it is dropping the voltage a bit if it does that. But that is it. Should you have a need to uh, fix a fan, then this module is available. Not sure how well it I'd rate it for safety. There is there is one thing that could happen that would damage the fan, make, do something horrible. If more than one of these triacs turns on, if it was to crash, I mean, it's unlikely, but it could happen, then technically speaking, it would bridge. Let me bring that schematic back in to show you what it would do. If it turned on more than one of these tracks, it would effectively bridge windings out across the core of the motor, so to speak, and that could actually result in basically... Well, a shorted turn, in fact, a shorted section of windings. I'm guessing that the motors probably have a thermal fuse in them for if that happens. But um, there is no other protection. But that's just, that's fairly common. That's what uh, other units are like too. So there we have it. It is the um, universal... I like the fact that China sells all these universal modules. Also, notice this one. I've just noticed it now. It says 300 watt and 100 watt. I bet the 100 watt just is the small tracks. But they've, this is the luxury version of the big Triax. But I like the fact that China doesn't just have these modules. Uh, one module that did not arrive. It was from AliExpress. And unfortunately, they didn't ship it in time. So AliExpress cancelled the order. It was for a complete washing machine replacement control board for universal use. It was quite interesting. The only component that wasn't standard in it, it would only drive the washing machine motors that had the uh, field and and rotor type winding that you basically use a dimmer to control for the speed. But uh, the only thing that wasn't standard about it was that it came with its own water level sensor. So I guess they're just it's a bit random what's in machines. But I like these modules. I like the fact that they're geared up to being able to take existing products that have failed electronically and just put in a new control system, a universal module. That's a really good and entertaining thing.